Well, hello everyone. How is it going? My name is Chase Lee, and welcome to another episode of Real Me In Colon, a movie podcast where you didn't really ask for it, but hey, I'm gonna give it to you anyways. This is a podcast where I talk about anything, everything, and well, anything about movies. Um, you know, if you're this is your first time listening to this, and you're not really a movie fan per se, maybe I can persuade you to be one. Uh, the song that you heard at the beginning of this is um, a band that is local here uh, in Texas. Uh, it, one of the guys I've known since high school, uh, the other guys I've known since college, Like it's uh, Fervent Rose. And uh, if you liked what you heard, then hey, uh, click uh, down in that description box below and that will take you to their um, Bandcamp page and you can uh, uh, listen to their songs and kind of follow them and see where they can go for concerts and stuff. So uh, uh, get, give them a listen, guys. They're, they're really good. But uh, how you guys doing? You guys doing pretty good on this uh Mother's Day, I'm recording on uh, Mother's Day. Um, you're probably just like, well, why aren't you with your mother, Chase? Don't worry. I, I will head over there as soon as I get done with this episode. Um, uh, so I just want to say uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And uh, listen, if you're a mother listening to this, first of all, don't let your kids listen to this podcast because they'll you know, be fucking scarred for life. Uh, but no, seriously, if you are a mom and you do listen to this podcast, I... Uh, appreciate it, and hopefully that you have a uh, fantastic day. So, um, guys, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Holy shit. Like, this is a ridiculous week for news, uh, trailers, and, you know, not really much for movies per se, but I'll review, uh, you know, one of the ones in the title, D-Train, uh, starring Jack Black and James Marsden. And, as you guys can see in the title, Civil War, guys. Like, Avengers has just come out. It's only been two weeks since it's been out. Well, three weeks if you count overseas, but... They're already announcing Civil War, the cast, and everything, because they started shooting this week, and, you know, I'm going to go over the cast list and the synopsis and what I think about it and just everything. So, you guys ready to get this going? So, uh, let's fucking do this. Alright, so, uh, the news. Um, The first piece of news is that the fifth Indiana Jones movie is coming from Lucasfilm. Uh, You know, when... Disney bought Lucasfilm for four point fucking shit ton billion dollars uh, back in the day. Not only did they purchase Star Wars, they purchased Indiana Jones. And so, guys, we knew it was coming. When you make a four billion dollar investment, I'm sorry, but you're going to fucking make whatever you can and try to drip that rag dry, son. So, I, oof, that was a terrible. Oof, ugh, this is gross. Um, so, we know that the Indiana Jones movie was coming, but. They announced this week that they are getting that on board, and uh, they're starting to kind of, you know, progress it, if you will. And uh, listen, guys, I'm not like the hugest Indiana Jones fan. I like the movies a lot, and I remember specifically when I was in film school, uh, for one class, I had to write a paper over Raiders, and uh, I hadn't seen it in forever, and so I, re- you know, I watched it for the paper or whatever, I was like, <laughs> holy shit, this, this is so much fun, I can't believe how... Uh, I haven't seen this in a long time, but I mean, like, uh, all the elements, you know, they're fine, they're nice, fun adventure movies that you can sit down with your family, or just by yourself alone, uh, eating Ben and Jerry's and, uh, sipping on some really nasty beer by yourself, but I mean, uh, it's just one of those movies that, like, it it makes you just want to stand up and go have an adventure of your own, you know, so, I knew this was coming, you guys should have known this was coming after the investment that Disney made in Lucasfilm, so, Indiana Jones, it's coming, so if you're a fan... Let's do this. So, next piece of news is that John Wick 2 is coming. You heard that right here, folks. Um, not really. It was reported like earlier this week. <laughs> uh, the directors, Chad Stahelski and David Leach, uh, they're going to come back and direct the sequel with Keanu Reeves coming back. And I got to I gotta tell you, it was... It was such a fun movie. Like, it was, it was just one of those movies that you sit down and you know what's coming. Because when you watch the trailer, it, it's just, it sets itself up as like a revenge flick, and you know that shit's going to go down. And it's just, it's so much fun. It's violent, and if it taught us any lesson, it's not to fuck with any dog, especially Connor Reeves' dog. You fuck with his little puppy, he will come after you and tear you into a new asshole. That's just the way it's going to go. Um, this is great news, having the uh, directors come back and Keanu come back. Um... If it was done by any other director, I wouldn't really know if I'd be okay with it. Because these directors, are they were stunt coordinators or stuntmen. Uh, I, I want to say coordinators because they they were on a lot of Keanu's 
movies like The Matrix and stuff back in the day, and so they they worked with Keanu uh, with the whole you know uh, you know stunts and everything. And the thing is, like Keanu Reeves, like he's fifty years old, yet he can kick your ass. <laughs> like he's he um, he's very knowledgeable and like uh, karate and I don't know if it's like karate, but like he knows his shit when it comes to fighting. So. Um, Having the directors come back with Kiana, I'm excited. I mean, John Wick was just a fun time, guys. So the sequel is just, it's bound to be fun. Um, simple as that. So uh, the next piece of news is that this was really interesting. And the reason why I bring this up, it's not because of the information. Because it, it really was nothing. Um, but it's it's more of along the lines of what this app can do in terms of giving us movie fans sneak peeks at uh, movie sets and whatnot. So Brian Singer uh, got on Periscope, which if you are not aware, Periscope is one of those apps where you can kind of live stream something right there from your phone and kind of just, you know, if you got followers or fans or whatever, you can show them what the hell you're doing, Uh, you know, setting up a new podcast, uh, setting up a new review, uh, picking your ass at a Baskin Robbins, I I don't know, you can fucking Periscope anything, so... Brian Singer, the director of X Men One, Two, Usual Suspects, uh, Jack and the Giant Shitstock, uh, Valkyrie. Oh fuck! What else has he done? And then, of course, Days of Future Past, uh, X Men. And so uh, he's directing uh, X Men Apocalypse, which is fucking awesome. And so uh, he periscoped on the set of Apocalypse, and he was basically promoting the road cut of Days of Future Past adding 14 extra minutes with uh, the rogue character in it. And it's kind of like one of those uh, double meanings where it's like, oh, it's a rogue cut because rogue's in it. And it's also a rogue cut because it's completely different from the original cut. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's fucking cute, Brian Singer. Um, But I was really impressed that he was allowed to do that. So why don't more directors do that? Like, I I realize that studios have an obligation and they don't want to show people anything. They want to keep everything under wraps. I get that. But why not? I uh, Just having Brian Singer there talking on set of the Apocalypse uh, movie, it was it, it felt surreal. I was like, oh shit, Like this movie's happening. Like It just it just kind of reaffirms us as movie fans. That, like, oh shit, these movies are coming. And it's just kind of really cool to see. I mean, it may not be cool to some people, but people that are listening to this podcast, myself, and a bunch of other people... We're in the small minority, but we love watching this shit. We love seeing directors when they do behind-the-scenes stuff of their sets and stuff. Even because the whole th- the whole time on uh, the set of Apocalypse of what he was showing us, they were doing like construction. So I was like, "Ooh, really fun!" But deep down, I was like, "Oh shit, this is awesome!" Like they're filming this giant warehouse. Like it was just really cool to see. So I really hope that directors and studios will kind of get on board with this whole Periscope thing. And it seemed like Brian Singer had fun doing it. So I hope like. He does more Periscope videos on the set of Apocalypse because that would just it would entice us uh, to just look out for the next Periscope of you know these set uh, visits and whatnot. Because listen, it, it doesn't come out for another year, and I think if you can keep fans' anticipations up and just keep Apocalypse on people's minds and keep doing these Periscope, periscope videos, I think they're really cool. So. Uh, not really a piece of news. I mean, it's a piece of news on the road cut of Days of Future Past coming out July 14th on Blu-ray. But uh, it was more along along the lines of just I wish more uh, directors and studios would do this. But I understand why not. As you guys can tell or hear, I don't know if you can, but uh, that was a huge thunder boom. Um, yeah, it's raining like uh, fucking crazy outside. It's, um, it's quite dreary on this Mother's Day. Um, the next pe- uh, piece of news is that the Hateful Eight uh, released its first photo um, of Kurt Russell, Sam Jackson, and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, and it looks cool. Um, I mean, it doesn't really show us much because there was a trailer floating around of like you know the Hateful Eight. It was like a teaser, but folks, it was a fucking like um, uh, title graphic. Uh, Thing where it was just showing the actors' names and like who's directing and writing it. Like it didn't really show us anything, so we haven't really seen anything from this movie. This photo, it just looks awesome. Like uh, Sam Sam Jackson's on the left, Jennifer Jason Lee's on the, uh, in the middle, and Kurt Russell's on the right. And Kurt Russell's got this really huge like handlebar mustache where he looks like one of those villains from like a 1990s movie where he would sit there and twirl it. 
uh, he, he just looks really cool. And then, uh, come on, Samuel L. Jackson looks, always looks badass. And Jennifer Jason Lee looks like a, a raggedy, like, woman where she looks like she's going to have, like, this dark past and whatnot. It just, it looks cool. It looks like a Quentin Tarantino movie where it's got, like, that fun element, uh, but it also looks like an authentic Western. So, and I'm really glad he is going back to Western uh, so soon after Django, which is actually you know, his follow-up, because usually when he does a movie, like, he doesn't re- really return to that, uh, I guess, like, feeling for a while, um, but, like, Django was in 2012, and he immediately did Hateful Eight, so I guess he liked doing westerns, and I'm super excited to see him, I'm, I'm excited to see anything Tarantino, so, um, I'm a little biased, but, uh, the photo looks cool, it looks, uh, I mean, it's, it's polished up for the magazine, but I can't wait to see them, these characters in action and see how gritty and dark and dirty they, they can get. It's, it's going to be a fun time. Um, the next piece of news, and this is the, uh, yeah, this is the biggest piece of news for sure. Um, Martin Freeman is joining Civil War. Uh, if you guys don't know who he is, um, he's in the Sherlock series, the BBC series with, uh, Ben at Cumber, Cumber Bun, Bit, Benedict Cumberbuns. Okay, um, Martin Freeman was also Bilbo Baggins uh, in the Hobbit films. He's joining Civil War, and we don't know what he's going to play. Yeah, it's kind of uh, awesome, because I don't want to know what he's going to play. I hope he just kind of pops up in this awesome role, and we just kind of get surprised by it. But uh, Martin Freeman joining is not the only list of actors joining this humongous fucking movie. Here is the cast list. Released by Marvel of who is going to be in Captain America Civil War. So it's going to be uh, directed by Anthony and Joe Russo, who did The Winter Soldier, which is great. Uh, it's going to be written by uh, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, uh, who also did The Winter Soldier and The First Avenger, which is great. They're completing their trilogy. Um, but that that's the, um, the crew side. Here's the cast. No joke, here is everyone that's going to be in this movie. We have Captain America returning. We have Robert Downey Jr. as uh, Tony Stark. We have uh, Black Widow, a.k.a. uh, Scarlett Johansson, coming back as Black Widow. Uh, We have Sebastian Stan coming back as uh, the Winter Soldier, slash uh, Bucky Barnes, I'm going to say it. Um, Anthony Mackie's coming back. He played uh, Falcon in Winter Soldier. Uh... We have Paul Bettany, who played the Vision in uh, Age of Ultron, which was, he was fucking awesome in that role. I can't wait to see more of him. Jeremy Renner's coming back as Hawkeye. Don Cheadle's coming back as War Machine. Elizabeth Olsen, who I fell in love with absolutely as soon as I saw uh, Age of Ultron. Uh, she will be in it as Scarlet Witch. Ant-Man! Fucking Paul Rudd's going to come in Civil War as Ant-Man, which is awesome because Ant-Man comes out in two months. I'm excited to see what they do with it. And I'll just be excited to see him in Civil War. Uh, we have Chadwick Boseman, who's going to be playing ba- Black Panther. Awesome. We have Emily Van Camp, who is in The Winter Soldier. She's going to play Agent 13. Uh, she was the um, the woman in the film. Or I'm not going to tell you what she does at the end. But in the beginning of the movie, she's kind of neighbors with Cap uh, in this apartment complex. Uh, Daniel Brühl is going to be in this movie. And... Uh, I forgot his character, but it's a villain. <laughs> um, Frank Grillo is going to come back. He was also in the Winter Soldier as Crossbones. William fucking Hurt is coming back as General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Holy shit. We haven't seen this guy since The Incredible Hulk in 2008, I believe, or 2009. I forgot. It was, it was right after Iron Man. And... The last time we saw him was at the end credit scene where uh, Tony Stark comes in to the bar and like he just tells him about the Avengers initiative and whatnot. And it's like, holy shit. Like, he's not been in a Marvel movie in six years. It, it, will, go, it will be going on seven when Civil War comes out, but that's crazy. So he's coming back. And of course, Martin Freeman. This is a stat cast. Um, here's the synopsis that they uh, released for the film. Uh, Captain America's Civil War picks up where Avengers Age of Ultron left off as Steve Rogers leads a new team of Avengers in their continued efforts to safeguard humanity. After another in- international incident involving the Avengers results in collateral damage, political pressure mounts to install a system of accountability and a governing body to determine 
uh, to determine when to enlist the services of the team. The new status quo fractures the Avengers while they try to protect the world from a new and nefarious villain. <laughs> I said villain. Villain, sorry. That's a cool synopsis. So it sounds like to me this movie is going to start out with the Avengers hunky dory, and then like they're gonna they're gonna fuck up something like they did in Age of Ultron, where they get you know the media's attention and the world's attention, and maybe you know the government's like maybe we should govern them because they're kind of going rampage. Uh, I mean they're going rampant, you know, like a, a fucking sixteen year old you know fat kid at a bakery. So I mean it, it's. It sounds awesome, and it sounds like they're going to really just kind of go at each other. My only problem with this entire thing... You guys hear that rain? It's fucking crazy. Um, the only problem I have with this entire thing... Is that... It's supposed to be Cap's movie. Now, listen. Uh, uh, when Anthony Mackie was... Um, being interviewed a while back about Civil War, um, he said that this is Cap's story, which I, I really hope it is because it's called Captain America Civil War. Uh, I love Captain America a lot. He's my favorite Avenger. He always has been. Um, I just really hope that this is his story. and I just really hope it's not Avengers 2.5. I hope it is in terms of the action aspect. But as far as the story goes, I want to centrally focus on Cap, which tells me, I don't know if I should spoil it for you guys. I don't know if they're going to do this in the movie, but in the Civil War graphic novel, there's stuff that happens, something really major to Steve Rogers and, you know, the Avengers in general and stuff. And so if they're going to go that route, Civil War is the appropriate title for Captain America's story. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. But as far as, like, everything else goes, I love the synopsis. I'm excited for it. I love the cast list. I mean, everyone is is a great actor in their respective roles. Uh, you know, besides the ones we haven't seen, like uh, Chadwick Boseman and Martin Freeman and Daniel Brühl. But as far as everyone goes, I'm excited to see what they do in it. I just really hope, with the jumbling of these characters, it still focuses on Cap. Captain America, Civil War, should focus on him. I'm excited. Like, guys, it comes out in less than a year. It's fucking crazy. Um, but let's... Uh, to, to kind of go off on a tangent a little bit, everyone's really kind of, like, pissed off a little bit that Age of Ultron didn't really have any enough nuggets, if you will, to lead into Civil War. Guys, do you guys keep fucking forgetting that Ant-Man is coming? It is literally coming in two months. That is a film in between Age of Ultron and Civil War. This film will probably have more of a tie-in lead into Civil War than Age of Ultron ever will. So, we just have to keep that in mind that there's another film coming out. So, I'm excited to see Ant-Man. I'm excited to see where it goes and uh, just see something kind of unique and different from Marvel. Because, you know, it's a guy that shrinks. We haven't really seen that yet. And it's a guy that has a kid that's also an interesting aspect that we haven't really seen from these films. So, Ant-Man's coming out, guys. Let's calm down. Age of Ultron didn't need to have that many Civil War nuggets because Ant-Man's coming. So, uh, it, this is awesome. It's awesome news, awesome cast list, synopsis, etc. So, enough uh, geeking out about that. Uh, the next piece of news is that Josh Trank. Now, this this was reported uh, last Sunday, but you guys know that when I record these on Sunday, I get the previous week's news and stuff, and then I give you guys that specific news for the week. Stuff drops on Sunday. This was one of those. Josh Trank is... He was supposedly uh, going to direct a anthology film from Star Wars. Um, and he's not anymore. He's out. Um, you know, he released in a statement that was like, you know, I, I, I was really humbled to work with these guys. And it's just it's sad we couldn't, you know, I, I have to leave. And then Disney's like, yeah, he's gone. <laughs> I mean, you, could, you can kind of tell there was some anim animosity there. And... The rumors are, and these are completely rumoredized theories, folks, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. But this is what I've been hearing, is that Josh Trank, you know, he's the director of the Fantastic Four reboot coming out in August, and apparently he was kind of quiet on set, he didn't really talk with anyone, he was just, 
he was just he didn't really cooperate I guess that would be the better word and they also uh, the rumors are they rented out a home for him and his dogs like tore up like $130,000 worth of damage what guys like I don't have a pet but I'm pretty sure if I had a dog there's absolutely no fucking way they could damage that much uh, in a home apartment whatever um I think it might have had might have to do with like all the rumors on Fantastic Four. Maybe I don't know. I mean, they're not, they're never going to release that unless like Josh Trank himself comes out and says it, or Disney comes out and says it. I just it's unfortunate because this guy's probably never going to work in Hollywood ever again. At least on big budget stuff. He might do smaller stuff like a Chronicle, but it won't it won't be like majorly distributed because he's kind of put himself in a hole now. So I don't I don't know. I don't know what's true. I don't know what's not. But I just know that Josh Trank is out of the Star Wars. Uh, anthology film after episode eight so uh the next piece of news is, uh, speaking of star wars is that uh vanity fair had their uh star wars spread and for all you uh, out there that are huge star wars nuts and don't want to know about the pictures i won't describe them to you i just i'll tell you that they look cool and uh I, it just makes me more excited i just it, they're really well shot photos it's kind of like with the hateful eight thing it's like it just gets you more excited so Vanity Fair did a whole Star Wars spread. It just looks like Star Wars. It looks really cool. So um, that <laughs> that was in that news. But like I said, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys because I, I have a feeling that some of you that listen to this are probably Star Wars fans. So I don't want to spoil what they are because you know some of them reveal characters and stuff and you know faces of certain actors that are playing certain characters. So I'm pretty sure you want to keep the mystery uh, alive. So the next piece of news um, is that the writers of uh, Civil War, speaking of Civil War, and you know Captain America, Winter Soldier, and the first Avenger, uh, they are writing Infinity War, Part 1 and Part 2. That's cool. Uh, I mean, I the thing is, like, you know, Winter Soldier was so good, and, you know, Anthony and Joe Russo, who are directing Civil War, that directed Winter Soldier, they're also coming to direct Infinity War. So, you know, it, Winter Soldier was so good that when we see Civil War, and if it's awesome... Then we're just going to be nothing but excited for Infinity War. So this news, you know, it's great. So uh, unless Civil War is awful, which I don't think it will be. Um, I, I mean, the writers of all of them coming back to do Infinity War, I'm in. I mean, yeah, there's really nothing more to say. Um, the, the last piece of news, I'm sorry, guys, the news is taking so long. There's just a lot of stuff to cover this week. Because uh, we're 23 minutes in and so much, guys, so much. So, um next piece of news, it dropped on Sunday, last Sunday, uh, when I had Joseph on last week, he <laughs> when we got done recording, he was like, dude, they released a Suicide Squad pick, I was like, shit, I just got uh, done recording, um, but yeah, they released a whole thing, a whole group shot of the Suicide Squad, where you had uh, Boomerang, uh, Rick Flag, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, uh, uh, Killer Croc, Diablo, um, Enchantress, and a couple others I forgot. But I, I don't really know the characters that much. I'll have to research them more. But we're just kind of judging on the, the picture. It looks fine. I mean, I'm excited for this movie and to see what Jared Leto brings as the Joker and what Margot Robbie brings as Harley Quinn. Oh, dear God. There were some photos that leaked this week of her on set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, she's um, she's slowly creeping up there as like top five like hottest actresses in Hollywood. Oh dear lord! Even in makeup and like crazy colorful hair, she is still hot. Um, but no, I, the floor looks fine. Um, Will Smith kind of looks goofy a little bit. Jai Courtney looks okay as Boomerang. Uh, I, I like Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Her makeup and stuff. Uh, Joel Kinnaman is playing Rick Flag. Um, I mean, it looks fine. I mean, like I said, it, I, well, Enchantress looks like she crawled out of a sewer and then like stumbled onto a set of a Guillermo del Toro movie, and he's just like, "No, you're on the wrong set," and then she stumbled on this one. Uh, Killer Croc kind of looks weird. He looks like a a really like diseased thumb with like a bunch of warts on it. I, I don't know. I just some of them look okay. Some of them. Not so much, but as far as like a whole pic- picture goes, it's fine. 
I mean, I'm excited to see the movie, so there you go. Uh, if you want to see the picture yourself, um, go ahead and just uh, look her up. All right, so that's, that'll be it for the news portion. Oh, dear Lord, there was a lot to talk about. So if you had any questions um, on the uh, news... Um, Oh, sorry, that was gross. Uh, go ahead and just comment in the place where I'll put my voice and let me know. Um, let's move on to the trailers. Uh, first trailer to come out, this one actually really surprised me. Now, I love documentaries. I really do. And after the Dallas International Film Festival, I'm going to take a break from them for a while because I saw like six in a row. But this documentary looks really cool. Um, it's called The Nightmare, and basically it focuses on uh, sleep paralysis. And... If you guys don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's defined as a phenomenon in which a person either falling asleep or awakening temporarily experiences an ability to um, move, speak, or react. It is a transitional state between wakefulness and sleep, characterized by complete muscle atonia, which is uh, muscle weakness. It is often accompanied by ter- terrifying hallucinations, uh, you know, such as someone in the room or whatever, to which someone is unable to react due to paralysis and physical experiences, such as a strong current running through the upper body. Now, I have I've only experienced sleep paralysis maybe once, where I've actually like remember it. It was fucking terrifying. Like I, I woke up, like my eyes open, but I couldn't move my body, and I was like, I guess my body was still asleep or whatever, and I guess I woke up from the dream too fast. But it's fucking terrifying because I couldn't move for a little bit, and like my body started, you know kind of moving a little bit, I was like, oh, fuck, man, that was fucking weird, so, yeah, sleep process, I'm sure there's some people that have it way worse than I do, but I've only experienced it once, and you do kind of hallucinate a little bit, because I I thought I was still in my dream, that's what was terrifying about it, but this documentary kind of explores that, I'm intrigued, like, this doc, or this trailer is fucking terrifying, like, it's actually a scarier trailer for a documentary than most Hollywood horror films, so, I'm on board. Like, it, check it out. It's called The Nightmare. Uh, if you like documentaries, I think you'll really like this one. Uh, the next uh, trailer I want to talk about is Ricky and the Flash. And this is written by Diablo Cody. And it stars uh, Meryl Streep. And she plays, like, you know, this older woman. And she's in a rock band called Ricky and the Flash. And she's Ricky. And she's got a kid. And, you know, she's kind of going through life and stuff. And the thing with Diablo Cody is who is the writer of uh, Juno, Jennifer's Body, and Young Adult. I think she's a hit or miss. Didn't really like Jennifer's Body that much. I really liked Young Adult a lot with uh, Charlize Theron um, playing like this, you know, woman who goes back to her hometown um, to kind of just see where her life is and like she rekindles with people she went to high school with and she was kind of a bitch. Um, I like Juno. Juno's fine. Uh... So, I mean, she's kind of a hit or miss, and Ricky and the Flash looks, you know, it looks like a typical Diablo Cody movie, where it's like, you know, Ricky's gonna learn to, you know, be in her, uh, you know, child's life, and, you know, interacting with her ex-husband, her current lover, and it just, it looks like life, I guess, I mean, it looks fine, I'll probably check it out at matinee or something, but, um, that's that, if you're a Meryl Streep fan, uh, it's, it's coming out like, late July, I think, so... There you go. Uh, the next one is Magic Mike XXL. Really not much to say. Um, you guys are probably thinking I'm going I'm to bash the hell out of this movie. Not really. Um, the, the thing is, like, I didn't see the first one. But everyone I have talked to, like, especially guys, they've actually liked it. And, you know, it was directed by Steven Soderbergh, uh, who has directed, you know, Traffic, uh, Side Effects, Haywire. Like, the guy is, you know, he's pretty good at what he does. And I, I mean, he's, he's coming back as a cinematographer and an editor on Magic My XXL. Uh, the trailer looks fine. I mean, you know, it's, for all the women out there, like, it's, it's a male stripper movie, so you get some eye candy. Uh, but it's shot well. It kind of it reminds me of uh, the Social Network's color grade, where it's, like, that kind of, like, um, gloomy yellow tint over it. I don't know. I have always dug that kind of look. Uh, but I mean, it looks it looks fine. Uh, I'll check out the first one eventually, but definitely not by myself. Oh dear God! I don't want anyone to walk in and be like, "The hell you watching, man?" I'll be like, "Actually, you know, at that point, I'll probably stand up and go, I'm fucking watching Magic Mike, man." Uh, but no, I like Channing Tatum. Um, he, he's really coming to his own as an actor, producer, and all that stuff. So. 
you know, I'll check it out when it goes to Redbox probably or Netflix or whatever. Uh, the next trailer is Mr. Holmes. And this is the I, – I, I kind of gave my thoughts on the teaser trailer like a few weeks back, I think. And uh, this is the trailer of Sherlock Holmes. He's really old, like super old. Uh, it's played by Ian McKellen. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen, sorry. Um, and then – he kind of follows this mystery based on his own life and like people's perception of it. It's really cool. It's a really interesting twist on the Sherlock Holmes story. I want to check this out. Like this trailer was really good. Like it's Ian McKellen guys. Like he's fucking Gandalf and Magneto. Like he, well in my lifetime, like he's been an actor for a very long time, but it, me growing up in the nineties and you know, the early two thousands and stuff like as a teenager, you know, the guy was Magneto and Gandalf. Like, that's who he will always be known by is to me. But this one looks like a very good role for him. And it just it just looks like a really cool, fun little mystery movie. And I'm, I'm kind of excited. So, Mr. Holmes starring Sir Ian McKellen and Sherlock Holmes. Plays an older Sherlock Holmes. It looks awesome. Um, and the last and most controversial trailer. That's why I left it off for last. Oh, dear Lord. Vacation Red Band trailer. Now, Vacation is a follow-up to the Vacation series uh, that starred Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. And, you know, in the movies, Chevy Chase uh, had a kid. And his kid's now grown up, played by Ed Helms. Wally, or, wait, what's his name? I fucking forgot. They go to Wally World, because uh, that's where they went in the original movies. Um... This one is being uh, written and directed by John Francis Daly and the other guy that did Horrible Bosses with him. I'm sorry, I forgot your name, sir. Um, this is the most decisive, like, split down the middle trailer all week. Um, a lot of people hate it because it, it's super raunchy. This is the Red Band trailer, so it's super raunchy. It's got a lot of sex jokes, a lot of dick jokes that people are not really feeling. I get that. There was a there was several jokes in the trailer that didn't really work for me. Um, and then there's some people who are just like, this was really funny. I can't wait to check it out. Which side am I on? I'm actually in the middle. I don't necessarily love the trailer, but I don't necessarily hate it. I think there was a couple parts where I kind of smiled a little bit and I was like, okay, so this movie has potential. It, it looks like it could be really, really funny. Um, I, like the, I like the fact that they're kind of going the raunchy route. That doesn't really bother me. It, just some of the jokes in there kind of felt forced. And, I mean, you guys know that I watch a shit ton of comedies. I do. And I've seen a shit ton of dick jokes, fart jokes, poop jokes, sex jokes, F-bomb jokes. You know, you name it, I've seen it all. So when a new comedy comes out, you have to... You have to be different. Like, you have to just... You know, you gotta stand out. And I, I'm sorry, but like, just some of the jokes in there just felt too forced. They felt too R rated and just for the sake of being gross. And then some of them, I, I kind of smiled. I was like, okay then. So, I mean, Ed Helms, I believe that he can lead a movie. Christine Applegate plays his wife. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is in the movie. Don't want to ruin the joke for you, but he brings his uh, hammer with him and he thinks he's on the set of Thor. Uh,. Charlie Day's in it, it just, you know, it could be a hit or miss for me, um, hopefully it's a hit, um, some of the jokes worked, some of them didn't, so, I mean, that's kind of my overall thoughts on it, so, um, I'm not particularly loving the trailer, I'm not particularly hating it, um, one of the guys that was, like, really adamant on hating it, uh, when the trailer came out, uh, is my pal Scott Menzel, oh dear God, did he hate this trailer, um, he is the uh, the founder of We Live Film, and I do videos for him all the time on that uh, website and YouTube channel. And so, he really loves the old uh, vacation movies, and like he just really just dis disliked the raunchy humor. And I agree with him partially. Like it it, it, it did feel a little forced, and so I, I just I don't know, man. We're just gonna have to kind of see. But all the buzz I've been hearing about this movie is that it's really fucking funny. So I mean. We'll see, man. We'll, we'll see. So, 
I mean, there you go, vacation red band trailer. So that is all for the trailers that came out this week, guys. If you have any comments, questions on any of the trailers, comment the place where I'll one voice and let me know. So let's move on to the movie review of the week. And that would be The D Train, starring Jack Black, James Marsden, and Katherine Hahn. Before I begin this um uh, uh, before I begin this uh, review, I just want to say I did not like it. Did not like it at all. I it, it's supposed to be a dark comedy. Like here's the, here's the synopsis. Uh, Jack Black plays Dan, and he's he's got family. He's got a job. He seems like he does like the mundane things in life to kind of keep his life going. He's a part of the high school uh, reunion committee for his high school class, and uh. It, None of the committee members like him that much. He's kind of a dweeb. He's kind of just a, a big old loser. And so he tells people uh, that he can get a certain classmate to come named Oliver Lawless, who was played by James Marsden, and he was in theater in high school. He was, he was a popular kid. So Jack Black, you know, he goes home one night, and he sees a uh, banana boat commercial with James Marsden's character in it. And <laughs> he's like... Uh, uh, oh shit! I can get Oliver Lawless. Like he'll, he'll he'll bring in people and stuff. And you know his mindset is like if he can get Oliver Lawless, then people will like him and and stuff. And it's kind of pathetic because it's the twenty year high school reunion, not the ten year, the twenty year, which means you're thirty eight, you have a family, kids, and you're worrying about this shit. Okay. Um, it may, you know, if it was the ten year, I can understand that because you're twenty eight, you still don't know what you're doing with your life. You kind of want to impress people in high school. I get that. They should have went that route. I probably would have liked it more. But, uh, so Jack Black's character, Dan, he has a job uh, that convinces his boss to take a trip to L.A. where Oliver Lawless is. Um, it's a bus- He convinces his boss it's a business trip to meet up with a certain client. But in all reality, he's going over there to convince Oliver to come to the high school reunion. And he eventually gets him to come and stuff happens. That's, I will, that's all I will say. And I hate it. Uh, Dan's character, Jack Black, he is obsessed with Oliver Lawless throughout this entire fucking thing. I've never understood like why he was obsessed. Um, and if you wanted to go the more that like, goofy route, that's fine. But at the end of the movie, it, Dan tries to learn from his mistakes and like learn about what he did and stuff and what his life is about and meaningful. And he didn't really learn anything. Like he was still, he actually was in more shit at the end of the movie than he was at the beginning of the movie. And it's like. He didn't really learn anything, and like he was just obsessed for no other reason. Like, it just—I don't know. And his wife was kind of oblivious most of the time. Like, it just—it was irritating. Like, uh, Jack Black would have a conversation with his son about a fucking threesome, no joke, in like the kitchen, and the wife is played by Catherine Hahn, who is in the fucking kitchen. They are at the dining room table. They're like twenty feet away, and they're talking about this. And she's like, "What are you guys talking about?" And it's like. Are you fucking kidding me? You could fucking listen to that. I just... Some of the naive, like, stuff of the characters and the obsession and just... The way it was put together, I did not like at all. It just, it just made me hate Dan's character even more. Like, he was just not a, li- a likable guy. He was kind of a douche. Like, why are you doing this to your family and kids? Why are you doing this to your job? Why are you jeopardizing people like that? Like, for, what, three hours at your reunion night to impress your high school buddies? fucking ridiculous like i understand like going to links to impress the popular people you went to high school with i understand that but the obvious obsession of dan like it just it really got to me i was like this is just poorly written i'd rather him just like have maybe subtle things he does like you know talks to him or has a beer with him to try to you know become his friend and become popular that's fine but like it just got into weird territories and I don't know. And they made a lot of homosexual jokes, and it just didn't really flow well because of what happens in the movie, and it just... <sighs> I don't know. I just... I really don't know. That's that's my quips on, like... That's why I really hate it from, like, the directing and the writing standpoint. It's just... It's just a poorly constructed story with, like, awful characters. And that's the reason why I hate it. The acting is fine. I, I actually enjoyed the acting... Jack Black does a great job. So does James Marsden. I love Catherine Hahn to death. Not only is she absolutely sexy, but she's super funny. And I, I just felt like she was a little underused. And, you know, her character was fucking oblivious until the very end. And it's like, well, what are you going to do about this? Nothing? Okay, bye. Um, 
so like she did a fine job and like everyone else did fine jeffrey tambor uh plays uh jack black's boss and he does a really good job i, I like i like him um it's just even his boss his boss at the end of the movie when jack black confesses that the trip was a scam the boss was like you could have just went on the weekend without me and just told your wife it was a business trip or whatever. And it's like you he was basically telling the audience like this is how you should have done it uh dan audience this is how he should have done it and it's like yeah no shit sherlock so Oh, fuck. It's just stuff like that just bothered the fuck out of me. Um, like I said, the acting's fine. The cinematography's clean. There's nothing wrong with the way it was shot. It, you know, it's a very clean-looking movie. There's nothing... It's lit well. I mean, that's all you can really say about it. It's not really focused on the way it was shot. It's more focused on its characters and stuff, which would have been fine if they would have been uh, not douches. Um, uh, uh, the pace, you know, it's, it's like an hour and 40 minutes, I think. I mean, it it flies by, but at the same time, I really hated, you know, Jack Black's character to a point where, like, it slowed down time for me, so, I don't know, I didn't enjoy this movie at all, maybe you will, maybe you like dark comedies, maybe that premise sounds kind of cool to you, kind of weird, uh, something different, uh, I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10, I just, I'll give it for the acting, and the soundtrack was pretty cool, I like the music, so, the acting and the soundtrack are the only reasons why I'm giving it a 2 out of 10, and not something extremely lower, um, the only problem is, like, I don't understand, like, why it was released wide. I don't, like, when you watch the movie, you can get that indie feel. Why didn't get it just get released in independent theaters? I don't know why it was released wide. Um, and when we get to the numbers for the weekend box office results, you'll see that it didn't really, you know, do well. Um, so that's my thoughts on the D train. Uh, just real quick thoughts on Ex Machina. Uh, I saw that movie as well, finally. It was good. It was a solid movie. Uh, I don't think it's like this extreme masterpiece as everyone thinks it is. Uh, comparing it to Kubrick, it, slow your shit. Um, it was a it was a nice solid movie, and I really liked the performances from Dom Nall, uh, uh, Gleason, and Oscar Isaac, and the chick that played um, Eva uh, or Ava the robot. So I mean. It was a fine movie. It was well. It was oh, the cinematography was gorgeous. It was so rich and deep in color, and there was a lot of reds, greens, and blues everywhere. And they all they all kind of meant something and stuff. And you know, I just I really liked the way it was shot. I love the acting. I love the pace of it because it was slow. It was like a slow burn, but the story was so compelling. It was like a thriller almost, and like it was like a cat and mouse game of like this weird. Uh, like game like Oscar Isaac was playing with Domino Gleason like it was like the 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 weird mad scientist like watching his pawns in like this this maze or rats or if you will like it was just really cool it was like you didn't know who was playing who it was really cool in that regard um but as far as like you know there was a couple things that bothered me uh particularly towards the end but i mean it's not it's not a bad movie at all and it's definitely not this masterpiece. I think it was a, gr- a good, solid movie. And I'd probably give it... I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I think it deserves that. I think it's... The problems in it are so far and few between. Like, I can't really knock it too much for it. But it was a really solid film. If you were curious about it, uh, Ex Machina, I think you really like it. Especially, like, AI movies, artificial intelligence. So... I would suggest that one. So, that will do it for the reviews, guys. Um, oh, Hot Pursuit came out this week? Oh, that's cool. I would rather sit on a cactus and tell you my experiences on that for an hour. No, I'm not going to watch fucking Hot Pursuit. Um, no. No! Why did I waste money on that? I saw Avengers Age of Ultron for a second time this weekend instead of going and seeing that piece of garbage. No! <sighs> No! I'm not going to see Hot Pursuit. Fucking piece of shit garbage film. No! So I'll, if all of you were wondering if I was going to review that, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so let's get into the box of res- results, guys. Um, Alright, what do we got here? What do we got here? Hold on, guys. Okay, so uh, coming in at number five, ooh, 
Paul Blart, Mall Coop 2, Paul Blart, <laughs> made $5.1 million. Why? Um, its domestic gross is 58 and worldwide is 82 on a budget of 30 You double that for 60 to break even. Oh, dear God, this movie made profit. What's wrong with you guys? Seriously. Why? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life to where you have to see Paul Blart? <laughs> Why? Stupid. Anyways, the D train came in at 16th place with $469,000. On average, it made $465 per theater. That means 40 people were in a given screening at once. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, also, Maggie came out this week. I mean, it was only in 79 theaters, and it had, it, wow, it only grossed $131,000. Shit. Um, number four is Furious 7. It, it garnered another $5.2 million. Um, right now, domestically, it's made 338, which is awesome. Well, worldwide, it's made uh, 1.4 billion <laughs> on a budget of 190. You double that to break even is 380. So, I think it's safe to say they've probably made a billion dollars in profit, even after you take into consideration what the theaters get and uh, just everything. I. I think it's made almost a billion dollars profit. That's fucking ridiculous, man. Like, good job. Wow, good job. Uh, number three is The Age of Adeline with $5.6 million. Uh, domestically, it's made $31 million. Uh, budget is unknown, but hey, $31 million for this type of movie? I mean, Lionsgate should be, you know, fucking ecstatic. Like, that's that's pretty good for this little, little movie that came out. So, $31 million, not bad. Uh, number two... Uh, is Avengers and number one is Hot Pursuit? No, you're, you're fucking high if you believe that. Uh, number number two is Hot Pursuit, unfortunately, with thirteen point three million. Why? On a budget of thirty five, so it's got to make about seventy to break even. I don't know if it will because next week uh, we have Mad Max Fury Road coming out in uh, Pitch Perfect two, so I think it's going to get swallowed up by the Pitch Perfect crowd, uh, which is roughly the same crowd. Um, so I hope you bomb. I hope you fucking just fall on the ground and flail your arms around. Fucking dumb hot pursuit. Number one, you guys know it, Avengers Age of Ultron. So last week it made uh, 191 for the weekend. Uh, this weekend, not bad. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's like a 60-something percent drop. Uh, made $77 million this weekend. Still a huge feat. Uh, right now, domestically, it's got $312 million. Worldwide, it's got 772 million. It's been out for three weeks now, uh, two weeks in the states, um, and uh, three weeks uh, foreign territories. Um, domestic does count Canada, which I always keep forgetting to tell you guys. Um, so domestic is Canada and U.S. and then foreign is everywhere else. Uh, but that's crazy. So in three weeks, it's made 772 uh, million. Which is not as impressive as Fury 7, which made a billion dollars in three weeks. Or was it four? It was three or four, but shit. It's still blowing the Avengers out of the water in terms of that. Um, its budget is $250 million, so $500 million roughly to break even. And then when you add marketing and stuff, it probably adds another $50 million. So, you know, they're, they're looking at $200 million profit right now, which is really great in their third week. Uh, two weeks in the States, so... You know, and that's it for the box office, guys. But it's really interesting to see how next week's going to play out because we have Mad Max coming out and we have Pitch Perfect 2. I don't even know how Avengers is going to fare. It it still might be number one. I don't know. Uh, but Mad Max, you know, it's rated R. It's got a really particular crowd. I don't know if it's going to do that well. Like, in ter- I, I think it'll do well with the people that watch it. But it's got it's a very particular movie for particular people i cannot wait to see it um pitch perfect 2 the first pitch perfect was a huge success so the sequel is probably going to be even more of a success so i don't even know how the box office is going to fare out guys my guess would be i 
I don't know. I, it's either Pitch Perfect 2 is number one or Age of Ultron is number one again. You know what? I'm going to be bold. I'll be the bold one. I'll say Pitch Perfect 2 is going to be number one, Age of Ultron is going to be number two, and Mad Max is going to be number three. So uh, I could be wrong, and I hope I am wrong. Um, but that's just how I feel. So that will do it for this week's episode, guys. Thank you for tuning in. This was a long episode, especially in the news section. Oh, dear Lord. Um, so, yeah, if you want to follow me on Spreaker here, you can do just that. Click that follow button. You get updates when I do these things live, when I post them. I'm also on iHeartRadio. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's at RealChaseLee, R-E-E-L, Chase Lee, all one word. Um, Facebook is Facebook.com slash Real Reviews with Chase Lee. Um, you can go like that. I uh, post trailers for you guys. Um, the podcast, reviews, etc. Um, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash shabootnik75, capital S, lowercase h a b o t n i k 75. And all the links are going to be in the descriptions below. You can also find me on dallasmoviescreenings.com. I write reviews for them. That's how I get into these press screenings. And then, of course, I'm also on We Live Film, uh, their YouTube channel. You can It's under Can't Breathe Comedy or the CBC, as it's known. And um, I kind of go all over the place and do comedy segments pertaining to the movies coming out. Um, this week I'll probably do Pitch Perfect since the sequel's coming out. So uh, you can find me on there. So I thank you guys once again for uh, listening, tuning in, lasting all the way up until this point. I really appreciate every single one of you that listen. I love you all. You guys keep me going, keep me motivated into doing these bad boys. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there that are listening to this. And if you are listening to this, that's fucking awesome. I had no idea that <laughs> people with children listen to this podcast. Um, so next week, uh, I will review Mad Max Fury Road. You can bet your fucking ass on that. I am ex- so ecstatic to see that. And if I see Pitch Perfect 2, I might do a double double feature next week. But as far as right now, Mad Max will be the uh, sole review that I do next week. It's followed by the news, trailers, etc. Whatever I pick up, you guys know the drill. I'm, I'm Chase Lee. Tune in next week for another episode of Rumi and Colin, a movie podcast. If you're not a movie fan, hopefully I convinced you to be one. See you guys next week with Mad Max, Fury Road with Tom Hardy and Charlie Theron. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good day, good week, good night, whenever you listen to this. Goodbye.